Call the meeting to order. Uh, meeting of the Planning Commission on May 2nd. You have the agenda in front of you looking to approve the order of agenda. Is there a Move motion? to approve. A motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any against, same sign, motion passes. Item B is the minutes of the April 4th meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second, any discussion? Seeing none, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to the public hearing items. Item 1A and 1B. We'll ask Donald to come up to the podium. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Donald Cress of the Department of Planning and Development. Item uh, 1A and B here today is the Veterans Industrial Park subdivision. This property is located, uh, outlined in black here. For reference, this is 19th Avenue North, 45th Street. This is the Dakota Horse Park here. And uh, this property, as you see at this time, is outside of the city limits. Um, as we go through the platting process for this, there will be a concurrently running annexation that will include this in the city limits by the time this plat goes to the city commission. I'll wait a minute for Commissioner Rosenberg to join us here. Welcome. The uh, property is currently zoned agricultural. It would be proposed to be rezoned to limited industrial. Here are a couple of pictures. It's a large property, as you saw there. This is standing up in the, uh, the corner up here along the railroad, looking southeasterly. This is 57th Street North, which is uh, an unpaved road past its entrance from 19th um, and BNSF Railroad here. And then this is the opposite picture here. We're standing on 19th Avenue North, looking back diagonally uh, across the property. And then here looking down 19th Avenue, this is where 53rd Street is gonna go in there. There's a street return right there that lines up with the NDSU Equine Center. And then this is standing on 19th Avenue. The adjacent property is Mid-America Steel, which your commission might remember you was uh, before you in 2016, in the fall of 2016, to create that lot that Mid-America Steel has developed. So again, the, proposed, the current zoning is ag. The proposed zoning is limited industrial. Uh, this is the plat. It proposed nine lots to be zoned industrial. Uh, north is on your right here, so we'll get a uh, north-south orientation here, which makes the lettering upside down. But the uh, Platt dedicates dedicated public right of way here. It'll be 53rd Street and 23rd Avenue North. There will be uh, limited access directly from 57th. We have to keep a, a area here clear for in relation to the railroad crossing. Um, there is one small lot here, lot one, block three, and at the uh, time I believe the applicant intends this to be a sign lot. So this would either be owned by a sign company or by the developer's company. There wouldn't be an HOA property owners association here to own and maintain it. That would be owned directly by one company or the other. They'll only have the one access off 19th Avenue at this time. This is the Brand Family Farmstead here, which you saw up here. This is not part of the plat, uh, and it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's not involved in this plat. It, and uh, the uh, applicant's re uh, representative, Ian Bullis, of uh, Eagle Ridge Development is with us this afternoon. May wish to address the commission. Staff's recommended motion is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Donald. Any questions? Go ahead. Donald, one question. You said this is not in, this is in our ET right now? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. And it's designated as industrial and commercial for the development there. And so as we go through this process, since the annexation process is shorter than the platting process, we'll do that annexation process within there. So okay. they'll end up at the city commission at the same time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Um, for Donald, yes. Um, so of course with the annexation, then you'll be providing infrastructure? Yeah, that will be, well, once they're in the city, that then the infrastructure would come from the city. Yes, correct, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And it'll, the annexation will include 57th, uh, 57th Street as, um, as well as a little corner of 19th Avenue there too. 
Is there a bit of an indication uh, as to what the potential use is going to be, or is it general at this point? Um, uh, Ma'am, I'd, I'd ask you to, when uh, Mr. Bullis uh, comes up for before you, that he'd be the person to ask to answer that best. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Is the applicant here? Could you please uh, introduce yourself? Yes, good director. afternoon, Commissioners Ian Bullis on behalf of Eagle Ridge. Here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Yeah, same question. Same question. <laughs> you know, I don't think that we um, have anyone looking for any of these lots currently. Um, it's supposed to be an industrial park, but I don't believe we're working with anyone on the sale of any lots at this time. Okay. Do you have a vision, or is it just um, land acquisition and um, changing the zone, zoning? As of right now, our plan is to do a an industrial park development with this site. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Not, thank you for being here. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to comment on this item, either for or against? Maybe just for the rules, because I know there's lots of people here. If, if you do want to speak, just feel free to come up to this podium over here, introduce yourself, and you can uh, make a comment for a couple of minutes. Um, either way. And we're all happy to take your comments. Seeing none on this, though, we'll close the public hearing. And commissioners, what are your wishes? I'll make the motion to accept the findings of staff as presented. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll please take the roll. Holtz? Aye. Rosenberg? Aye. Morgan? Aye. Stoffer? Aye. Shuey? Aye. Gunkelman? Aye. Schneider? Aye. The motion passes. Thank you, Donald. We'll move on to item number two. If you'd introduce this. Thank you, sir. Item number two is the Interstate Business District Edition uh, as a major subdivision, a growth plan amendment, and a zoning change. Uh, so this is, there's a, a lot going on in this project here. So uh, this property here was uh, recently annexed into the city and it is, this is 40th Avenue North, Cass County 20, also known as Cass County 20. This is 45th Street South, or 45th Street North. This is the city of Riley's Acres. This area here is in Riley's Acres extraterritorial jurisdiction. So that is on the west side of 45th Street. And this of course here is the uh, I-20, Interstate 29. You see this square here this is where Memory Fireworks is. This was not included in the annexation and uh, is not included in the plat. Uh, just some visuals here for you. Um, this is standing at the northwest corner facing uh, southeasterly across the property. Here's 45th Street. Here's Cass County Dream 40. Uh, now again, we're doing almost the opposite. Here we're standing on 40th Avenue North, looking uh, northwesterly basically. Here are the Riley's Acres Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Residences. Um, this is standing actually on the interstate entrance ramp across the interstate. And so you can see the full panorama of what's out there. So this property here is op construction, which is not involved in this plat and was not involved in the annexation. This is the subject property. This is Memory Fireworks, which is again in that bite out of the, uh, the uh, annexation that's not included in that. And then here we see the Riley's Acres extraterritorial jurisdiction. And then north of it, this undeveloped area, is the city of Fargo extraterritorial jurisdiction. And then just uh, looking here, this is County Drain 40. We're looking north from 40th uh, Avenue North. This is County Drain 40, 45th Street, and again, the Riley's Acres ETJ residences. And that's uh, shot along the uh, Interstate 29 frontage. Uh, current zoning is agricultural. The proposed zoning is going to be uh, limited industrial and general commercial with conditional overlays. Also included in this is a growth plan amendment, which facilitates the zoning. Uh, as you see here, the existing growth plan from 2007, uh, designated commercial down here along the arterial, and then some single family residence and open space. The proposed growth plan amendment is to take those two land use designations and redesignate that to industrial, to, again, to facilitate the limited industrial zoning. The uh, Interstate Business District plat looks like this. Again, north is on the right. 
here, so we'll get that get north at the top there for you. Um, again, here 15 lots to be broken down zoning wise like this. Um, lot one down here will be general commercial with a conditional overlay. This lot number two will be zoned public institutional. That'll be a city uh, detention basin, stormwater detention basin. These lots that wrap around the street here will be limited industrial with a conditional overlay. And there's a long narrow lot right here. It's called lot eight. And that is gonna be zoned public institutional. That'll be dedicated to the Southeast Cass Water Resources District for uh, future drain expansion. Also included in this plat is a dedication, dedication of 44th Street North. Uh, it, it looks like the street dead ends, but that's not what happens. Uh, it will come up to here. It will cross the Cass County uh, or Southeast Cass Water Resources District property on an easement, which will will be depicted um, on the on the final plat there. So the street doesn't really stop. It goes and connects to 45th Street. So there would be you could you know it'll go from 40th Avenue to 45th Street and. 44th Street will be, there's a lot of 40s on this one here. Um, 44th Street will eventually be the access for all the properties here. Uh, the fireworks stand, whatever develops here, there will be no more direct access off of uh, 40th Avenue North except for 44th Street. Uh, we talked about a conditional overlay. This is broken down into four different pieces here and this is in your staff report too. I uh, just have this up here for reference. I'm not gonna read it all the way through. So um, there are uh, prohibit some prohibited uses and we are, uh, there are some uh, folks here from the Riley's Acres extraterritorial jurisdiction. <coughs> we did have a meeting with them. Uh, we were required to do so by ordinance whenever we have a growth plan amendment and they, uh, one of the concerns they expressed was buffering, especially against the industrial lots that face their uh, residences. So we do have some of that here, both with lighting and uh, in on the, on the uh, at this time, the general commercial would not have the tree buffer unless that ever develops um, as an industrial area. If there's ever a con conditional use permit for industrial placed on there, that would require the, uh, the industrial buffering, but there is the lighting buffering. Oh, went too far there. There's the lighting buffering. Um, this condition here, number four, about uh, not used uh, property not used for rubbish or debris. That is not to suggest that the applicant suggested they were going to do that. That's just a condition that's in all our industrial conditional overlays and conditional use permits. We just leave it in every one. Uh, when we get to the uh, industrial that faces uh, the uh, Riley's Acres ETJ, there'd be a residential protection buffer, including a three foot high earth berm and two rows of 10 point, that is a size of trees, space 25 feet on center then those would be done at the time of development. So when, the, when a property owner would come in and get his building permit, that would be just part of what they would be reviewed as part of their building permit and the building permit would not be approved until that buffer was approved. Uh, again, pretty much the same there. Uh, for the lots that um, are north of the Riley's ET, Acres ETJ, that, that landscape buffering is not included. That is the part that's across from Fargo's ETJ. And then for the lots that face front on I-29, again, that landscaping buffer is not included. Um, there is a limitation in the number of, and height of off-premise advertising or billboards, as you see noted on there. So <coughs> it's a rather detailed uh, one there. Um, we, uh, the, uh, the owners, are, the owner Trent Duda, and then the, uh, the other owner representative, Dr. Knudsen's representative, Nate Volmuth of Goldmark Development are with us this afternoon, and oh, and uh, Cass County Engineer Jason Benson is also with us. Uh, 40th Avenue is still a Cass County road. Uh, one of the concerns of the Riley Acres ETJ residents was traffic, so uh, Mr. Benson was uh, able to join us here this afternoon. If we do have any questions about that, as well as our own engineering staff as well. Um, as you see, there was a considerable public comment. Uh, we did have the meeting, and there's a. Letters included in your packet. Uh, the letters are slightly differently worded. One has an extra paragraph, I think, from a real estate agent. But uh, they're all listed in there. And then you received a laid out item this afternoon uh, as you came to your seats with additional couple signatures on that same letter. And I believe several of the folks here are uh, may be here to testify. Uh, staff's recommendation is stated in the staff report and shown on the screen. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Donald. Um, I said one maybe comment or question for you, and I think yes, this was a staff report was great.
could you maybe just give us a little education um, on, because this is a newer area of town, it's zoned agricultural, that's sort mm -hmm. of how everything comes mm -hmm. in, but the growth plan shows it's something else. Could you just kind of walk through from a city planning kind of process? How does it come agricultural to come in the city to have a growth plan saying it's something else? And then how does it come to us? Yes, sir. So um, this was in our extra territory. Oh, let's go back to the map here. <clears throat> So uh, this property, this area was in our extraterritorial jurisdiction for some time. Virtually everything in the ETJ is zoned agricultural. There are a few exceptions, but they were usually platted before they were in our ETJ. Um, our growth plan does extend into the ETJ, so the growth plan designates what the probable land uses or perhaps the, the suggested land uses for those, are, for those areas are. It's a policy document. Um, I know your commissioners have reviewed that many times, and we will have at the end of this meeting an update on our new growth plan that's in process. And that would again give those land use designations, as shown here. Uh, those designations are subject to amendment through the process that we're going through right now. Um, at the time in 2007, the, these were the land use designations, and then the applicant. Uh, Mr. Duda there proposed to develop this as industrial and so proposed this land use designation. Um, and again, this is before your commission for a, for a recommendation for approval or not. Uh, the, the land use designation and the zoning go together because they have to match. So uh, were, there, were it the case that this growth plan amendment were not approved, you couldn't have the limited industrial zoning in that area. Um, it's separate from the plat. Thanks for that. Is there any other questions for Donald from the commission? Uh, Donald, on the original growth plan, there's an area of the park along I-29. Do you have any history of what was intended with that? Um, actually, I think um, Mr. Williams had a little more history on that. I was not here at that time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, back in 2007, when our consultant was putting together the growth plan, there was a thought of doing um, wind towers as the entrance to the city of Fargo and 16 years later that hasn't quite panned out so um, when it comes to adjacent properties to resident or to interstate it gets to be challenging to, to do some of the residential there as we found in the south and and the intersections of 29 and 94 okay. any other questions for Donald uh, Donald can you talk a little bit about, um, or could somebody else from the planning department talk a little bit about the process with, was there collaboration or discussion with Riley's Acres city officials? We did not contact Riley's Acres, the city of Riley's Acres directly. Um, the folks in the ETJ were within the notice radius, um, so they, they got that. Um, pursuant to an agreement with Riley's Acres, when this goes to the city commission, we will notify them directly because there's an existing agreement with them about the extraterritorial jurisdiction. So they wouldn't. So they wouldn't officially be notified as a township until well, this proceeds. Yeah, the city of Riley's Acres. Yeah, that's right. But they, the the city of Riley's Acres, does get noticed before the city commission. Yes, sir. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking a look at that policy for us too if we're that close to another city it seems like we could duplicate that policy it might make sense yes sir um, there has been discussion approximately two years ago when this process started Riley's acres did request us to um, let that go out of our ET um, so they could develop it along with mr. Duda um, but after analyzing how we try looping the water main up by Amazon um, it was discovered that we really need this area to run a 16-inch water main north and then underneath interstate. So they they are aware. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think either of our questions were to imply that Riley's Acres doesn't know what's going on up there. It's just maybe a good policy. The if city ha if the commission has it, maybe we could replicate it. Yes, sir. And just if I may follow up, that water line that Mr. Williams referred to will go up 44th and then out that easement and across the interstate. John. One other question: Do uh, ETs overlap when you're next to a <coughs> adjacent no. jurisdiction? 
No, there's a line between those ETJs. Okay, and how does that get created? I can answer. Go ahead, Mark. Big, um, based on how state legislation has changed over the years, they, they have modified it to recently, if you were to expand your extraterritorial jurisdiction within certain proximity to another uh, incorporated entity, um, there would be joint jurisdiction where you would mutually talk about this. However, as we've looked at the uh, the majority of our ET, which was brought in like in the late mid mid to late 90s, around when the growth plan was written, um, as legislation has changed since we enacted that four mile back then, it still has been grandfathered in as sole jurisdiction of the extraterritorial jurisdiction. So as we annex, does, do we jump that two miles? No. It, it would be if we expand our extraterritorial jurisdiction. Okay, so we have to physically expand it. It isn't automatic. Right. So, yes. So ETJ does not automatically extend with annexation. You can't just keep moving it out there. Two separate processes in the North Dakota Century Code, and you have to do them separately. And we did not extend our ETJ because we can't because we're up against Riley's Acres. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions for Donald? Yep, go ahead. Donald, can you pull up the growth plan one? Yes, sir. Okay, so the stuff that the Riley's Acres area, that area north of it, that's not been annexed at all? That's, that's correct, sir. Okay, so we're talking about the growth plan is residential all the way. What about the empty spot there, right where your cursor is? What's that? That's Riley's Acres ETJ. Okay. So we wouldn't have jurisdiction over that. Okay. Is that what is that? Do you know what that zone then? Uh, yeah, it's a rural residential. Yeah, that's in Riley's Acres. Uh, these folks would know better than I here. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. So the and then below the annex part that is not annexed either. That's is that part of Riley's no, so, Acres? No. So yeah. So this. This here is, is actually a city of Riley's Acres. Right. But Although our growth plan appears to cover it. And I think there's been some evolution here. Um, again, Mark might know more history on that. But that. But that, to the right of that? This here. This is Riley's Acres ETJ. Okay. That's outside of the city. This is NDSU. Okay. Right here. So let me, can I help you with one thing here, Commissioners, just to make sure we're all looking at the right thing here. Yeah, that's, that's a good map. Yeah. If I just may take a minute, sir, and do this. That's fine. Thank you, sir. So we don't, this is a, we didn't have quite all the, all the stuff on here that we do on our city one. But so this is the subject property here, this triangle. This is Riley's Acres extraterritorial jurisdiction. This is Riley's Acres extraterritorial <coughs> jurisdiction. This is NDSU farms and fields over here. Uh, you might remember this down here. This is 32nd Avenue, City of Riley's Acres. These are the Laverne's additions, those industrial additions. We did one in 2020 and one last year. And uh, then when we take this off, we can see more clearly here the green is City of Fargo's extraterritorial jurisdiction. Um, this should actually, we got to update this map. This, is, this, this part has actually been annexed now, so this is in town. Um, and then this blue is Riley's Acres ETJ. And I think some of this has evolved since our growth plan happened in 20, or in 2007. There have been some adjustments, as Mark was indicating here. So, okay. That okay. So we're looking at residential wrapped around that 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 area that we're talking about today. At the current growth plan would indicate that, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Shudu. Donald, for just comparison, are there any other places in town you can think of where we've got a residential area abutting a, a limited industrial? I was asked that question at the meeting there too, sir, and I was looking around. I don't know that there's a lot of new, I, I, I don't know offhand that there's any new industrial. There are, are places where there's residential in the industrial, um, would be non-conforming um, in the older parts of town. I don't know that any of our new industrial has developed really closely to um, residential. I don't know, Mark, did you have any thought about that? Okay. okay. Just maybe to follow up on that, on 52nd Avenue there, on like 45th Street South, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of those businesses were sort of existing, and some mm -hmm. of those are probably limited industrial that we mm -hmm. put in with some different overlays. Yeah. That might be a similar one where there's, it's it's an established industrial where yeah. we put residential all around it. This and, is, and some of those commercial properties, that's a good point, um, Commissioner. Some of those commercial properties, 
well, we don't need to go back to the map for that. Some of those commercial properties actually have a CUP for industrial, uh, which would, they can be various things. So it's industrial, there's obviously degrees of industrial, um, but uh, you know, there, there could, there, there are some in that way that they, they transformed a little bit. Sorry. I know you've you talked about this, but maybe just to reiterate, what so what sort of buffers on the west side of this property what, between you know what is the distance with the road to the residential homes and just kind of refresh that and is there any sort of setback or buffer to where the buildings would be? Right. So from let's see here, what map's going to work best here? <clears throat> so f tell you what, I'm going to go back to the GIS. So across, so from Riley's Acres residence front yards here, across the road and across the drain, and there's actually a narrow drain lot, um, I think it's about 170 feet or more. And then there's gonna be another 92 foot wide buffer lot, that lot eight we looked at on the plat. Um, so you're looking in the 200s feet from from their front yards to the edge of the property lines there. And then on the industrial lots that will be facing them, which will be lots three, four, and five, we've added that requirement for the extra buffering uh, for that. Um, the residential protection, so they're outside of where the residential protection standards would apply. So that's why we had to add the extra buffering into the conditional and, overlay. And two questions on the drain. I know you showed a picture of it, but yes, sir. Are they? Is there like a, a levee or a berm on the outside of the drain, or is it all sort of below grade? Um, currently, there is. There is. Let's go to that picture. There is no. Not much. There is no, actually I'm gonna hand that question off to our city engineer to make sure I'm answering that correctly. So yeah, there is no levy there today. And as we get closer to that completion of the diversion, um, we'll be looking at the elevation of those buildings. Okay. And then the driveways for the industrial properties, was that all off 44th or is there, are we forbidding it off 45th or are they? Yeah, there, there's no way to access the, the Industrial properties from 45th. The only connection the will be will be 44th, um, largely because the drain board only allows one connection. And the, so that you're going to cross the drain there. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yep. Yes, sir. That's correct. But these lots themselves here do not directly access 45th. Thank you. Can I say something? No, we'll have a time for public comment. Just any other questions for staff? Donald, was there any discussion on lots three through seven of just running that general commercial up there as you've gotten lot one? Um, that would be, I, that did come up, I believe, at our meeting. Um, at this time, the applicant did not volunteer to do that. Okay. I'd just like to ask about um, the environmental concerns, especially for Riley's Acres. Um, I'm sure that must come up on a case by case basis. Is that correct? <clears throat> In terms of whatever happens to be installed in those area in the commercial area. Yes, ma'am. I, yes. Well, I mean, I'm saying this because I guess that if I lived in a residential area and I was used to fresh air and quiet, mm -hmm. it would be a concern of mine if something of this magnitude, if it does have magnitude, mm -hmm. would uh, come into play mm -hmm. in terms of quality of life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what some of these people Sir, may we, be we, saying. You'll have time for public comment. Thank yeah. You. Okay. That's all. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, ma'am. Any other questions for staff? Um, is the applicant here? Wishes to add anything? Um, anybody have questions for the applicant? Yeah. Could you invite you up to the podium? Introduce yourself for the record. If you have any comments you want to add on the front end, feel free. Uh, my name's Trent Duda. Um, I own Earthwork Services and ARD Properties. Um, I'm the one that wants to put in an industrial park up there. Um, part of the part of the buffering, I do understand their concerns. That's why I wanted to put in a buffer in between there. And that he he talked about a couple hundred feet there. It's actually 
I had to give 175 feet from the center of the drain to the Southwest grow water or cast, cast drain board. Plus from that drain all the way to the property. So it's probably more 300 and some feet, I'm guessing uh, in the, in a buffer. And then we're going to do the 20, the 25 feet there with trees on those first three lots. So on these three here, thank you. Is there any questions for the applicant? So uh, earlier, um, Jennifer holds earlier, the, uh, um, Donald Kress mentioned that, or I'm not sure who it was, maybe it was um, one of the planning department um, staff. Somebody mentioned that you had at one point started to work with Riley's Acres to develop the property. Could you tell us a little bit more about what, yeah, I what did. discussion I, uh, took place with Riley's Acres? I actually went to Riley's Acres first because I, I wanted to be in Riley's Acres, um, just a little smaller community. and. And to see what their thoughts were and then uh and they wanted me there so and then but it was you guys had the et on it at the time so i had asked them if they would write you guys a letter saying that you they wanted me in the industrial on that and to work with me and so they did that i, I believe they sent i have the letter too but they sent um fargo a letter saying that they would welcome me and that they wanted me in the et Okay. So then I tried to go through to get into their into their jurisdiction, um, but the problem is that they signed a, they signed a, um, a document back in late nineties two thousands that limited where they can't plug any sewer in any industrial waste or sewer into Fargo Storm Sewer. So that pretty much put a kibosh to me trying to get into that because they already had an agreement with the city. A Fargo that they couldn't do that so but that's why okay and that's what you were that was what was indicated earlier about the the storm sewer drainage and then the the um with the Amazon the development of the Amazon warehouse so we're getting uh so we're talking so what uh Trent's referring to is the sanitary sewer so there's a sanitary sewer agreement that limits the connections to be residential. Um, and so that's the agreement between the city of Fargo and the city of Riley's Acres. And then what uh, Mark had mentioned is um, there is a looping of the water main that will go through this addition, which will provide a looping water service into that industrial area over by Amazon. Mm -hmm and improve uh, water pressures up on the north side. The Mr. same Drew? question um, I'd asked before on those lots three through seven, what's the reason for having um, just that, versus um, commercial? The general commercial, it really um, puts back what you can do on them. Um, like some of the ordinances where you can't have uh, a door facing the residents, right? And you can't have a door facing the streets like a loading dock door. Um, there's certain things in the general commercial that doesn't allow that industrial does. You know, even for, uh, um, there, there's a few different circumstances that I looked at and I thought it would be a better fit for the limited industrial. But Donald, would there be, is there an option to be able to do a conditional overlay to address some of those, like a loading dock on a street facing side? Uh, they're probably well. I'm going to get. I'm going to refer that one to Mr. Williams here. Because uh, I'm not 100 percent sure what the conditional overlay on those lots already. I, there, there isn't one is, on those. There's now. not conditions of R as outlined in the land development code in there. Yeah, there's nothing on them now. So I think Mr. Duda was believing that there, even without a conditional overlay, that um, we can certainly, if that's the wish of the commission, we can certainly uh, apply something on there okay. and then what uh, types of business are you looking at putting in these all well the I'm, I'm selling the, I'm selling a majority of the lots I'm gonna keep some on the east side for my own business um, and we have a um, an excavating business Santa gravel um, and I'll be keeping some right north of the memory fireworks on that east side of the road the first couple I'll probably be keeping right there okay there was reference in some of the materials to I think some concrete 
yeah. processing. But so it's we that. recycle concrete so or in asphalt. So what happens is, let's say we tear up a parking lot here at City Hall, we'll haul it back to that spot, and then once a year we crush it. Like it might take uh, one to three weeks to crush this, um, and then we hire you. Know, you hire a, a crushing company to come in, which they also have to have dust dust, dust suppression on there. Um, sprinkler lines um, hooked up to our wire or fire hydrant while they're crushing to suppress the dust as it's going. So, like I said, usually one to three weeks out of the year is is about the length of time that they crush. Okay. And your intention is for that to be on lot 10 through 15? Um, I mean, I guess the, ought to be on the east side. The yeah, it's east side, side on the south end. Okay. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Those couple lots. And then, this last question what's the purpose of the bridge over? the drain to connect to 45th Street? Uh, fire, fire and Rescue wants a second access. Okay. Any other? Yeah, so, yeah um, so if you were to reconsider the, the differences between the industrial and the commercial or light commercial, um, you've said that it would be to your advantage to go with the industrial. Um, have you, uh, considered um, the um, your neighbors uh, as mm -hmm. to what might be most beneficial to them or is this purely a business decision on your part um, no it's a little bit of both I mean that's why we're putting in the buffer you know I, I asked them to put in a buffer a 25 foot buffer with a three foot berm so that way it would shed some of that where they wouldn't have as much uh, visual on their aspect, you know, um, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of both, like I said. Well, I was just uh, thinking that, you know, one of the things you said was a difference between the two designations was the doors and the face, what faces the residential area. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were going to take that and look at it individually, wouldn't it then be going into the area of the uh, like commercial uh, or the commercial rather than industrial so what uh, there might must be some other uh, well there is there's like parking you can't park certain things out there um, on on general commercial it's a uh, um, any storage that it, it's a pretty big difference from general commercial to limited industrial you know it doesn't mean that you're gonna put a plant up right there in that lot doesn't mean they can't so I, it, which that's what they're going to say, which I totally agree with. Doesn't mean that they can't put up a, a, a factory of some sort, but the likelihood of that happening on a, on a small lot is pretty pretty small, you know. So how would it? Uh, how much would it affect you if you went to the uh, general commercial? It would pretty. It would affect it pretty good. I mean, in terms of dollars. Um. It would limit. It would limit a lot up there. What you know, I don't know. I haven't done the study on how much in dollars it would affect. You know, I, I don't even know if it would. It might limit uh, um, how fast they sell, how fast the lots sell. Who wants those lots? You know what I mean? Um, could you probably get the same price for them? Yeah, you, you might be able to still get the same price for them. So it wouldn't affect me that way. You know, as much I wouldn't think. But well, I think that is a point of brief. Mm -hmm. um, just brought up one question. Um, any other questions for the applicant? Otherwise, a question for staff. Again. What, one question on staff. 45th Street um, is gravel today, so that bridge connects. Who's responsible for maintenance on that? Is that county or just, Reed or, or sorry? I, no, I was just going to jump in when you were done. Sorry. Okay. But, uh, the county engineer is here too, and I was going to ask if he'd be willing to come up and talk about some of the okay, traffic great, concerns. Thanks. And so that was what I was going to be asked for next. Okay, sorry. So if I can jump in quick, but, though. Yep. Um, the 45th Street gravel is not county, it's township. And typically, as those roads come into the city, then it turns over to a city maintenance. Okay. Um, and so um, that connection point on the north side would be just a box culvert. We'd work with the drain board on sizing it and install a box culvert for that connection um, because due to that block length, there is going to be a required secondary connection there. Any, any 
questions based on that. Yeah. So the so 45th Street would then once it's annexed would become city responsibility. It's not. It doesn't have a responsibility. Riley's Acres doesn't have a responsibility for that. No, I, the township does today. So we'll have to work with the township because we're not. Um, I I need to look at the whole road isn't coming in right, and so we only have from the section line over. Is that a correct statement, Donald? Yeah, yeah. So we only have, so we'll have to work with the township on that maintenance agreement when we share those section line roads, no different than with Riley's Acres. Okay, then 44th Street that would go through here, would that, that, <clears throat> that would be the responsibility of the city at that point? Correct. And, and would that end up being asphalt and? If it's okay. industrial, typically it'll be concrete road. Okay. Um, I guess I had one question on the growth plan, you know, where the city is in the middle of a growth plan or maybe at the beginning of a growth plan update. And so it's always tough to do these when we have a, an, an old plan like this. I guess from what staff has seen so far through the growth plan process, I mean, you know, talking about the different zoning options, is it consistent with where you think that growth plan is headed that this would be light industrial or are we throwing a sort of wrench in our, our new process? I would say based on the work we've done with the previous growth plans, uh, we really haven't discussed any of this in this new growth plan, but all the um, amendments and um, annexations and application of growth when we <coughs> have implemented our zoning, uh, based on the proximity to interstate, this is consistent. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Thanks for being here. We appreciate you taking our questions. Thank um, you. Sure. I was going to ask the county engineer to come up, but if you have. I'm an applicant as well. That, okay, yep. go ahead then. Thank I you. Sure. I figured, uh, but I wasn't sure. Thanks no, no, working. that's okay. Uh, Introduce Nate, yourself, please. Yep. Nate Volmuth, uh, representing um, Knutson. Um, could you bring up the plaque quick? Yes, sir. Um, Donald. Uh, so. Where it says GC with CO, um, that's the lot that I'm resent, uh, representing uh, Dr. Knutson on. He owns that lot and the lot uh, adjacent to the interstate, um, which we are requesting the zone general commercial. Um, and we, uh, uh, Dr. Knutson is in um, a favor of the industrial zoning adjacent to his lot. Thanks. Um, if the county engineer, Mr. Benson, is willing to come up, we've had, if you saw our packet, I'm sure it was shared with you, um, there was a number of sort of traffic comments in there along 40th and just talk about what you see as this part of it, if there's any changes or just. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, Jason Benson, Cass County Engineer. So I've had a number of discussions with Donald and the planning staff from a road access standpoint because uh, west of I-29, west of the interchange is where our county road 20 starts. Uh, we used to own Cunner Road 20 all the way to the Red River. Several years ago, we did a turnover to the city of Fargo all the way to the interstate. Um, and when I, when we look at it uh, from a traffic uh, standpoint, first and foremost, we look at the access control. And so in working with, with uh, the planning staff and then working with the client, uh, the developer, um, I was pleased to see that we all have just one access that was a concern of having a, a separate access or leaving the existing access for the fireworks facility and then having a, set, a, a an additional access point for the main development. So consolidating this to uh, having one access on this 44th uh, street definitely is a benefit from a safety standpoint. So that was one concern I had and that's uh, been alleviated. Um, with the access permit uh, that the applicant will have to apply through the county highway department, uh, similar to what we've done in Horace and other kind of higher growth areas where there's a higher level of tra uh, uh, traffic would be uh, to, for them to, in the construction of 44th Avenue, to also install a right turn lane westbound to go into that 44th and then to have a bypass lane on the south side so that vehicles that are eastbound and turn le left to go north onto 44th. Um, if you know 
that gives a, a right right bypass lane for people to bypass around that. And for those that aren't familiar with that, if you drive Country Road 17 through Horace, um, we've got a number of those, um, uh, to, again, to, in areas where that are newly developed and have uh, higher traffic volumes on a, on a high traffic volume road like that. So that was the main concern. Um, you know, right now for future development, uh, future uh, safety enhancements in that corridor. Uh, for anyone that's interested tonight up at the Armed Forces uh, or the National Guard Armory on 40th Avenue, um, just on the east side of I-29, there's a study, uh, uh, study open house for the interstate interchange at I-29 and 40th Avenue. And that's being led by Metrocog and the DOT. Uh, so there are some different concepts on how that interchange would relook. There's a lot of challenges because of going up and over the railroad tracks. And, um, and so there are some concepts, including uh, one is called a barbell concept where you have roundabouts on both the east and west side uh, that connect the, the on and off ramps into roundabouts that would, that would service Country Road 20 and Country Road uh, and 40th Avenue to the east and west. Those types of concepts will ultimately provide some additional insight into what 40, the intersection at 45th Street and Country Road 20 will, will look like in the future. Um, should that be a, a, a future stoplight or traffic light there or a, a roundabout? Um, there's a lot of geometric issues, including challenges with the legal drain extending culverts, the existing culverts that go underneath Country Road 20 at 45th Street, um, you know, putting a roundabout over top of that. So those are all things that there's a lot of possibilities, but um, with this development and now uh, with the increased growth and traffic demands of, of uh, Riley's Acres, um, I know engineer for Riley's Acres is here. They're, they're working on a, an additional uh, subdivision that's uh, been platted uh, just to the west of that. Uh, uh, yeah, Donald pointing that out. You can okay. see the, the roads in um, so, so that's going to add some additional traffic. Um, and then, of course, just all the other industrial and commercial facilities with Amazon and, you know, that whole interchange area is a high traffic, high growth area. So um, we're from the from the county transportation standpoint, I'm, you know, looking at as these changes in uh, land uses happen and along with what that future interchange is going to look like, because I think to do anything west of the interstate, not knowing what that interstate's going to look like is would be uh, short-sighted. Um, we should wait until there's a better plan from the DOT. I'm open for any questions you may have. Thank you, Jason. I guess with, with that last comment, is, is any of the options with Metrocog, I assume the city is working closely with Metrocog on it, those options aren't going to impact this development? That's being looked at right now or are you saying it limits no, the, what at, we should do on this at this time um my understanding from uh the different the, i think there's four different options that they're looking at all of them by the time they get back on the west to the west side fall within the existing dot interstate right away and and um because there there are challenges with trying to keep existing traffic and traffic flow to those uh, to those facilities off that interchange while building a new interchange. Thank you. Appreciate you being here too. Any other questions for Jason? My question would be, again, on that gravel road on 45th, um, and frankly, my concern would be trucks going up 44th, just looping over that bridge, coming back down again, and, and damage to that road, um, and really responsibility, and it sounds like really rely on Reed Township, right? Correct. That is a Reed Township Road. Now the city. So, so can uh, I jump in? Uh, ben did come, and as soon as we annexed it, we took over maintenance. So the city of Fargo is maintaining 45th Street. Okay, so so Fargo would have to yes. maintain that gravel road then. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jason. Okay. Now we're going to have a public hearing. I, I assume there's a number of people that want to comment. Please come up to the podium, introduce yourself. Um, there's open chairs there if you want to kind of create a line if there's more than one. Happy to be here as long as there's comments. So just ask maybe to, um, don't necessarily have to repeat everything somebody else said, but 
whatever is important, we want to hear it. Try not to disturb the keyboard, sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you to the City of Fargo for allowing us to participate in this hearing. My name is Paula Peterson. Um, I'm here today regarding the interstate edition that we're discussing and the pr proposal for the amendments on zoning and in essence our opposition of this. Um, my husband and I live on 45th Street North. Our property has been in our family for over 40 years and we do face directly to this property. Prairie Estate, Prairie Estates, which is our informal name, uh, was established in the early 1970s uh, within Reed Township and now represents over 48, or excuse me, 78 acres um, with over 20 landowners with land um, properties between two to five acres. Um, this is, we have nine properties that directly face 45th, um, and face the interstate addition. Yeah, uh, as you know, we are an ET, uh, extra t uh, ETJ for Riley's Acres. Um, and we just would like to, in addition to what you've already received in your packets, would like to share additional concerns um, from the collective community. Um, we, Riley's Acres was not notified, so therefore the residents did not know. Um, we actually went out contacted people, put it on social media, went door to door, and talked to residents. Now, we weren't able to reach everybody, but those are some of the individuals you know, that did sign off and, and have the same concerns that we do as a collective residential area. Um, our area represents country living at its best. Um, we have the ability to have horses. We've got mature tree lines. We have quiet atmosphere, but yet we're close enough to the city limits. This is considered prime real estate for all of these factors. The interstate addition has always been agricultural zoned. With it being recently annexed to the city, the proposed changes are a very dramatic change for the entire community. Not only for those that live across from this property, but also for the Reed Township as a whole. The residents on 45th Street North and those in Riley's Acres will also have to look at and deal with the effects of whatever type of businesses that are on the above stated property. Although the planning process is largely driven by what the city and the landowners would like, we hope that you understand and take into consideration that others are affected by these decisions. We ask you to consider what is the best interest of the neighboring communities. I ask each of you, if you lived in my house, is this the type of zoning you would want across the street from you? The proposed amendments would move the zoning from agriculture to a limited industrial or commercial. This also includes manufacturing and production. If the zoning is approved, any developer could purchase a lots and put in any type of business that fits within this definition or the overlays. There is nothing precluding a developer from purchasing several lots and putting in a business within these guidelines. It could be a five-story building, a trucking company, an asphalt company, we don't know. As Trent stated, he bought this land to expand his business, as any business person would. However, he also has current properties in West Fargo and his trucking business, which are located in industrial areas that are not next to residential areas. He stated that he will keep to the two to three lots for his own use, and he wants to put in essentially what's called a concrete crushing um, facility. This will obviously not be something that's run two to three weeks out of the year. It can be run seasonal as long as the weather holds. It also can mean stockpiling of concrete for everybody to look at, whether it be from the interstate, when it be from our houses, or off of 40th. Currently, as mentioned by many of you, there are no good examples of where the city of Fargo has put in industrial or commercial zoning directly next to an existing residential area. This is an opportunity for the city to consider doing the right thing for our community. The biggest question is, why are you not considering keeping the original growth plan of a mixed-use development of residential or low-density commercial as a transition between the current residential areas? Despite this section of land being next to an interstate, there are established communities around it that strongly need to be considered. 
it does not bring any benefit to our surrounding community. Although an overlay plan can include requirements for buffers, which includes a three foot high <coughs> buffer and tree lines, it doesn't matter how far that buffer is, whether it's 200 feet or 300 feet. When you're out in the open, everything from sound carries. There are no trees there to today. It could take five to 10 years before there is growth, which still means we have to deal with it for that long of a time. We will still be subject to any noise and have to look at whatever structures are on our new horizon. This also brings up the topic of traffic and safety. As mentioned, the largest concern of this group, and thank you um, for the county, for others, you know, talking about the fact that changes need to be made to be able to handle anything that goes in this area. Riley's Acres is developing the New Haven addition right next to the west, directly of our, our existing ET. That alone is also going to bring in more, plus you have this addition. The design of this plat will incorporate that city street through the middle, and as we talked about, the bridge over the, count, the County 40 drain. Obviously, you can't stop anybody from using that north exit and coming right past our road, which means additional dust, which is not something that any of the, the, the area wants to be able to handle. Lastly, our concern is about decreased property value. There are many articles and studies available by real estate professionals that outline the negative effect of zoning commercial and industrial next to a residential area. We have talked to several local realtors who have validated this fact. Potential homeowners will do their research and check the zoning surrounding them and see their surroundings. They purchase a home based on quali quality of life. The current estimate from realtors is that we could lose up to a fourth of the estimated resale market value of homes based upon what is located across the street. This is a huge concern and well worth for our coming to you and saying that we want to protect land that's been in our families for almost 50 years. We ask for you um, to consider everything that we have proposed, but I also want to mention to you, um, and sorry, Trent, you're going to laugh at this, um, the hundreds of geese that use this field as a landing strip today will not like this change either. However, they can move, we cannot. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to? Please just a reminder to introduce yourself for the record. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Jerome Cobley, uh, not a very eloquent speaker, uh, just a Joe Schmo, Schmo, so sorry if I insult anybody, I'm not trying to. Um, I did a lot of research before I bought my acre plot of land in that area. I purchased it five years ago. I knew the plan, the city plan was for high density residential and possibly some smaller businesses. I purchased out there because I have a special needs daughter, <laughs> was not doing very well in the hustle and bustle of being in town. And we were right next to Lewis and Clark Edition School where there's a nice large area. She, we've been out there for a year now. It took us four years to get financially stable to be able to put a house up on that lot that we bought five years ago. She is doing so excellent out there. She loves it. We are able to go out to that 45th because it is a gravel road that's used only by residential right now. We can play out there. She doesn't have to worry. We don't have to worry about her. Any of that changes, we're going to have to move. If we lose 25% of our value that we've gained, I mean, I spent over 600000 to build a house that was assessed at 100, 520 because we did it through the COVID, which is my bad. But I mean, if we lose another 25%, I mean, we're up shit creek on trying to get anywhere else. I did this move for my daughter. If this goes through and we start getting industrial crap out there, tra crossing, a tr crossing across to 45th, which we all know traffic is going to be 
those trucks are not going to go just out 45th. They're going to make that loop just because it's easier. It, I don't know what we're going to end up doing. Thanks for your comments. Just remind everybody too, I know they slip out. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, but if we could just watch the profanity a little bit, the, the meetings are public too. Streamed. So, anybody else in the audience wish to provide comments, either for or against? Yeah, please come up to the podium, introduce yourself. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Mike Listina, and I've lived out there for 50 plus years. I was the first one, even before Riley's Acres was there. Uh, I guess I have a couple questions. If, if the uh, planning and development committee here decides to go with the plan presented today. Uh, who is in charge of the permits that are given to each lot? And what can be built on each lot? We're, we're not really here to answer questions, but if it's in the city of Fargo, the city of Fargo, then it, it will be city of Fargo's. Okay, and is there is there a chance to be able to uh, protest the permits? The conditions are what's what, that's what we're deciding today with this zoning change. Okay, and would there be a possibility? I know we're 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 concerned about the loop of the brand new road forty fourth crossing drain forty and entering on the north into forty uh, fifth street, and uh, we're. Many people talked about the uh, traffic looping around and coming down right in front of our, our residency. Um, would there be a possibility, and I'm just asking the question just for you to think about it, that the crossing over 45th could be limited to uh, cars only? In other words, no truck traffic. I think that's a consideration that we, we've heard, so I appreciate the comment. Okay, and then the, uh, you know, well, there was one other thing that just lost my mind here a little bit. Um, okay, I think that's it for right now. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for being here. Anyone else in the audience wish to add anything? Yeah, come on up. Again, please introduce yourself. Make my sure my feet are in the right spot. Uh, Kyla Dubord. I'm also a resident on the ETJ, and my house would also face whatever is developed on this area. Uh, my biggest questions are really around the benefits to the community of what is being proposed. Um, you know, as we understand it, and it's actually very interesting to listen to the group before here, who's also doing some industrial area right south of us and he's not even sure yet where he's gonna sell them to. I, I use that as a base of Fargo isn't out of space and we're not out of industrial space that isn't already zoned as industrial. So what is the benefit of moving it here? It's a limited space, you're only gonna be able to grow so far, like an industrial park grows bigger, right? You're, if your plan is to build off of your current existing business and make it more wonderful, you will want to be in a bigger space than this. So keep it as the industrial is kind of my thoughts on why, why here, like why is it that this is the space that needs to be there? Um, the few things that I called out when I was reading through all of this is, um, uh, it's called the Interstate Business District which is pretty interesting that it's actually not called industrial, like the Veterans Industrial Park. So it's a little bit wonky as to what is the intent of what's coming up here. Is this a business zone or is this an industrial park? Um, I don't think that has been thought through yet on exactly what the intent of the land use is. Um, the biggest pieces for me, which have been talked about, is on page six of seven, they talk about it's an accepted criteria about the resale value. Like it was acknowledged that our prices, our value would go down, and that would be acceptable from the city. That's definitely not an interesting piece to be a part of. Um, and they're connecting to our road, which is on page five of seven. Um, there will be traffic on that road. I have a new driver. I have a pet. I have all these things that we have out there. And there is enough traffic issues already on Main 40, 40th Avenue or County Road 20 
you're gonna have large trucks. When I looked up Trent's fleet, he has 45 vehicles registered. I don't need any amount of those 45 coming onto my road. Um, and there is no precedence for this. We've done a lot of research as residents, like where has this been successful at? Where has Fargo put this into place? Where existing mature residents, you plop in limited industrial, what does that look like? What's that experience? And we haven't been able to find anything that is even giving us an idea of what our worlds would be like. Um, so my call to action is, listen to what the community needs to. We were never asked about what we wanted there or what would be placed there. No considerations were made from the open house until the time today about what could be changing, how could that be better from us. So I ask for your compassion and think about what your neighbors would like. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else in the audience wish to add anything for or against? Again, just a reminder to introduce yourself for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Wyatt Crum. I live on in that community on the very north edge, backing up to the field that's currently Fargo's ET area, right where he's pointing. I'd like to speak to precedent today. Um, we've already spoken a few times about what uh, industrial next to residential looks like in Fargo, and we don't know because it doesn't really happen. And um, if this happens, yes, it's not directly next to my property, but as was stated earlier, if we're changing the 2007 Metro COG plan from residential to industrial areas, why would that industrial area not eventually wrap around behind my house? I don't have a drainage ditch and a road and everything in between. I have 40 feet from my deck to Fargo ZT. So my concern today is that if this is set up as light industrial, that that will eventually carry over behind my property and um, they will also change the 2007 recommendation of residential to light industrial backing directly onto my property with no buffer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Come to the podium, introduce yourself. Hi. I'm Jim Prudham, and I live straight across on 45th. And when they talk about a buffer zone of 20 feet, that's a car and a half length. That ain't much. And basically, when from my yard, you have the road, the ditch, and the, what they propose to be industrial. Not very far at all when you're standing in your yard. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Good afternoon, Lucas Crackwell. I live I live in Riley's Acres, so I'm not right up against this property. But uh, I saw some of the uh, messages from our city Facebook page on it. Um, I guess I was just looking at. It. I'm not you know directly impacted on this besides the traffic concerns, which I think that's being addressed big picture, which is good. Um, but I was looking at areas as well, and like I said, one area that I was thinking about was down in Frontier. And that's been developed, but it's all residential around those people that were in that area. Uh, as well down, there were some properties on 52nd that were existing. You know, that was switched to residential. You know, there was some planning with some buffering uh, with the grow plan itself, Fargo. Uh, I recall um, a lot of kickback on the 52nd interchange on where Walmart was gonna go back in the day with those people in, in like timber lake or timber wood area so you know there's been situations where you know existing property has been taken in consideration so i would you know i would ask you know kind of look at what you know what the zoning is near the these near these homeowners here um and kind of consider that so it's not just an open you know open zoning for any type of you know industrial plant or whatever could go in there so thanks thank you Anyone else in the audience? If there's anybody else, if you could come out and sit up there just so. I'm Gail Prudham, and I'm also right across from there. The only thing I want to tell you is we live in a paradise. I sit out there 
on my east side and I watch the sun come up. You see the ducks fly. It's beautiful. And what we haven't talked about is, you know, the buffer, the lights, the traffic, the noise, the dirt and dust, all of that, it will take away from what we have. So please, please think twice about passing this. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing nobody else, I'm going to close the public hearing. <clears throat> Commissioner? Yeah, feel free to ask a question. Donald, could you pull up? A lot of what we're talking about here reminds me of what's, if you look at what's on 12th Avenue North and 7th Avenue, you know, on the, on the north side of 12th Avenue, the businesses that are there, I, I think about structural materials, uh, sanitation products, a few other of those type of businesses, which to me wouldn't be necessarily a problem in this area, but then you go closer to 7th Avenue and you've got, you know, the stockpiles, uh, Master Construction has one, the other con contractors have one. Where the, they, These properties here, sir. Well, um, and, and how are those zoned as far as why did those end up where they did? Uh, is the zoning... Um, the north side of 12th Avenue, for instance, you don't see many of the concrete plants or the stockpiling or something. I'm, I'm just curious, was there a difference in the zoning? Well, if I may I respond here, Commissioner. So the, the brown here is general industrial and the whatever that color is there, the gray-ish, is limited industrial, which is what's proposed for this project. Um, there's... There's not a lot of difference between them. I don't. I don't know the actual history of the development of those properties. I don't mark. Do you know any? Or did they just happen to develop that way? I yeah. mean, because I mean, the the businesses that I see that I, I use some of those businesses, I don't see those types of businesses necessarily being a problem in here. But if you put the stockpiling. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, whether it's, a, you know, you got an asphalt plant on the other side of the interstate. Um, I, I guess I can, I can see where the neighbors are going about. I mean, it, it, within our light industrial or our commercial zoning, there isn't a reason why what happened up on, say, 12th Avenue and north or south of that happened the way it did. It, perhaps a couple of things might be involved in that the size of the lots the timing of the development some of those businesses have been there you know these these aggregate businesses have been out there for as you know commissioner yes. for a long time since you've been working in this business a little longer than i have and uh they've been out there for a long time whereas some of these uh newer areas they're smaller lots they're even newer types of businesses um that might be part of the reason on that i've never done an analysis of the history of those and within our zoning, within the zoning or within a conditional overlay, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I mean, again, I, I look at what's on the north side of 12th Avenue, to me, would not necessarily be a detriment to the neighborhood. I mean, the types of businesses that are there, I mean, you got coal paper, you got a millwork business, you've got those types of businesses, but... Um, when you start crushing concrete up there, and, and you, I think you bring in a whole different, um, but I'm just trying to see, there is no, with a conditional overlay or whatever you do, can you, could, could to make this thing work for both parties, is there a way, say through the conditional overlay or whatever to really be a little bit more restrictive on what could happen there? Conditional overlays can prohibit uses. That's correct, sir. As you note on the proposed conditional overlay, there are a yeah. few prohibited uses. Um, we don't like to do that on the fly. If we were going to do that, we would have to go probably go back and work that out. Um, I mean, we, yeah. but with the conditional overlay, you can list the conditions. As we have done here, sir. Uh, prohibited uses and then you know, conditions. Yes, sir, that's correct. So. Uh, oh, sorry. Is, is there any thought to 
um, to work with both parties to maybe make the conditional overlay more restrictive. If that would be the commission's direction, we could do that, sir, yes. Um, or, I mean, or, or just go back to the drawing board <clears throat> and try to keep, say, both parties happy. I, uh, I'd be in favor of that. I think this is a sad story. It's a negative development for the residents in the area, and I don't think that they've been properly consulted. Um, I think about other things too, like for instance, what do we want our, um, the coming to Fargo, what the view is gonna be, you know? Like we talk about that coming into downtown Fargo and Fargo from different directions and we want to have something that's, um, you know, inviting, uh, not just um, piles of rubble. Um, that would be the least of my concerns, but I think it is a concern. Um, there are less, much less visible places for that sort of activity to take place. And I really feel for the residents. Um, I know what it's like to have uh, a place that's really beautiful and wonderful and you want to live there for the rest of your life and then some terrible development comes along, including the road through the community. I think that's one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. Um, in terms of ruining a community. So I really think that um, all sides need to go back to the drawing board and the, the community of Riley's Acres and surrounding need to be included so that there is some recognition of, of the way they've decided to live their lives in this idyllic place as it's been described by many. So I'd say go back to the drawing board. We need a lot more work on this project before it's acceptable to anyone. I, I guess from my, my standpoint looking at this, obviously it's a challenging one when you grow up against another, you know, where there's people already. And a lot of the comments I've heard, we've all heard up here when you have a residential development get next to another residential development, right? Well, what about the traffic? What about the safety? What about my view? You know, we've seen that with every type of zoning up against every other type of zoning. And so I'm trying to separate the fact that this just hasn't been developed into anything yet. If we had this in town, like we see in South Fargo a lot, as, as we've grown, you get a lot of these same complaints. And so trying to figure out, okay, what, what would this be if it was a residential development? Would we still get the same comments about the geese aren't going to be there anymore. My sunset or sunrise, you might not see it. And those are those are tough because the city's growing. And so we, we need to figure out how to do that. I guess one of the thoughts I had too is when this subdivision was developed, uh, my understanding is that with the county ordinances are the way they are now, they couldn't even develop like that anymore to try to prevent some of these problems. And, and so, you know, the county did a good job on that, I think, to prevent future ones like that, but ones that are already built does put us in a tricky situation, but that's that's why we don't let those get developed like that in the county, because it does make it very difficult to plan and, and make our decisions very difficult. And for the people living there, um, you know, you're gonna get upset when the, the changes next to you. And so we've tried to avoid that, and I think it's easy looking in the future, but going back, so it's, it's just a challenging one. For sure. Having lived in this extraterritorial area for 17 years off of uh, about four miles east of here, I, I think we can look to the industrial development uh, to the east to really see how well that has been managed where the Amazon plant is. There have been significant improvements to the roads. I think the, a lot of the discussion around traffic, at least on 40th Avenue, is largely moot because we're already expecting a four-time increase there. 45th Street, the gravel uh, road, I think the maintenance component of that is a, a different condition. My predilection is always to support economic development and anything that we're gonna see is, a, is an improvement. I'm struggling with this one, again, because of the uniqueness and we brought up 52nd Avenue a lot. If we climbed in the Wayback Machine before St. Ann Yoakum and Don's Car Wash were there, this would never see the light of day to put an industrial plant across from Rose Creek and, and Meadow Creek. Um, that being said, I think there are ways to get to an acceptable plan, but this should be sent back, um, especially on those 
the Western lots of looking at changing this from not limited industrial in that space into a more of a, a general commercial and expanding the uh, berm and the trees fully across that, that west side. I think that still leaves some issues around the road to be able to probably uh, manage, but the developer probably could have a more creative approach to a solution instead of just a flat out uh, limited industrial throughout it, with the exception of what one or two lots. Yeah, go ahead, Art. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have a process question, I guess. So from, if we decide today to delay this or send it back, but if we went forward and voted on it and it failed, do they go to the back of the line or can they come back and fix this? What's the easiest way to make sure they don't lose a whole lot of time if, we're, if we try to get this thing reorganized? So Commissioner, our standard um, situation here would be that your commission has three options to recommend it to the city commission for approval, in which case it will go forward to the city commission once the uh, subdivision plat is cleared, technical review, and a few other things. So probably seven to eight weeks from now. You could, your commission could recommend denial, in which case it goes to the city commission anyway, the same process, the same timeline. Or your commission could recommend continuation to a date certain, that would be one of the future planning commission dates, which would be June 6th or the July 6th would be the next two. And with the direction to staff to work with the applicant, the residents, uh, whoever you would designate to uh, revise this plan, as uh, Commissioner Shuey said, to make it seem more compatible with the context, and then they would just come back. They wouldn't have to you know, reapply or anything. They would just come back, that date certain, and then you again would, um, uh, I believe you would hear it again, or continue the hearing, and then you uh, could vote at that time or make another decision at that time. So if we deny it, it, it goes back, they have to start over. No, if you deny it, it still goes to the city commission. But I mean, if the city commission denies it, then they are yes. Then, then that that would be the end of the process, and, and then they'd have to start over. and start again. Yes, okay, sir. that's correct. Thank you. But if we do vote to continue, it does not go to the. It doesn't go anywhere until it does not go to the city commission. If you vote to continue it, that's correct, sir. I have a couple of comments. Um, I guess I appreciate that we're discussing the options that we have in front of us today. <clears throat> I personally don't see how continuing this is going to give us any more information than we already have. It might help the developer or the owner of the properties um, work with the city, with work with the residents a little more. I don't see how continuing this is gonna benefit. Um, we have a 15 year old growth plan in place right now that we're looking at um, reviewing and I think, <sighs> Ultimately, we have to go on the information we have. And what I see here is, um, I see that the criteria that have been met on, no disrespect, pretty flimsy ground. Um, I don't see that, that approving this motion or sending it forth as recommended to the city council is, I don't see that this is compatible or consistent with future land use. Um, it's certainly not consistent with the growth plan, and I, uh, I would recommend um, rejecting the, fi the findings and recommending denial. So that was almost a motion. Do you want, it was are, not. Are you... It was not an official motion. It was a discussion or a position. But it, nope, just I checking. certainly could put forth a motion. It, it's up to you if you. If you're doing that or not, I just wasn't sure what that. Meant. I just want to make sure that there's room for other people to comment before. Sure. Any other discussion? It's obvious this isn't going to get approval today. <clears throat> At best, it will get a continuance and ask somebody to work it out. Um, I, you know, as I was looking at this, I'm thinking about you know this is put in place in 2007, back when you know there was already some things established. They kind of knew or at least had a, some sense of what was going to be in next door. I don't know when the, when the last time the land changed hands, changed hands or the real estate there. Was that after 2007? Do you mean the subject property, sir? Yes. Um, you have to ask Mr. Duda when he bought that, I think fairly recently. Just what? Okay, and I think that's that's important because, you know, the community expected this. The, the person that 
buys the land wants to convert it into something else that was not part of what you buy it with what was already there what was expected then you're proposing to change it dramatically to have an effect a negative effect neighbor for the neighbors so i think the onus is on the landowner that wants to develop it, to do it in the best possible manner when they're trying to change the conditions uh, to the best possible manner for the neighboring community so i i i'd go for I'd go for a continuance, I, but if not, then I'd go for a denial. I agree. I'd like to go f through to continuance just so that the neighborhood has an opportunity to work a little, and the city, to work more with the developer. And if it comes out that there isn't any uh, agreement, it still can go, we can deny it, and it can go to the city commission. So it's a little bit more work for uh, the staff, but I think in terms of relationships with the neighborhoods, our neighborhoods, we need to set a precedent that we, we listen uh, to the residents. And so I would go for the continuation. So we've had about three partial motions. Oh, oh, sorry. I make a motion that we continue this to the next planning commission meeting, send it back, and see if we can come up with a better plan that works address 45th Street and addresses the concerns of the neighbors, whether it becomes general commercial or limited or something else. But I think we need to do a better job of getting this development done so that it matches, because it's still on the interstate. It's going to be hard to put residential on the interstate right there. I think there's, there's a compromise here somewhere, but we just need to do a better job of figuring that out. And uh, I think a continuance will solve that. A second. Motion second. Is there any other discussion? Seeing no discussion, is that, would you like more direction? Is that what? I just you? note for the record, sir, that the next planning commission is June 6th, 2023. Do we need sure. it? I, I guess, Donald, is there a chance right now to pull the owner and the residents to see if in the next 30 days, is, is 30 days enough time for them to maybe come to some kind of, um, agreement on you know maybe strengthening the conditional overlay or something that'd be a question that the chair would ask yeah i think we might i mean we we've, we've heard the discussion if they're not ready in 30 days we can make decisions in 30 days they can well the other thing is we don't need to have it doesn't need to be 30 days because we've had continuances on many projects that have come before us and so there really isn't that that 30 day pressure uh, if the city itself, the planning department, thinks that it'll take longer. Commissioner Morgan, so when we do make a continuation, we do continue it to a date certain. So, I see. But then on the next meeting, if, if there's we've heard there's not an agreement they from staff, we can simply say this is continued again or maybe withdrawn or whatever the... Sure. So, so I'd like to make my motion the next week. That, yeah. that it's, it's a week. June 7th. Yeah, so 6th. 6th. June 6th. June 6th. Thank you. Is that okay with the second? We'll add that to the motion. I'll, I'll amend my second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Coleman. Aye. Holtz. Aye. Shuey. Aye. Stoffern. Aye. Morgan. Aye. Rosenberg. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion passes. I am going to take a break for probably <laughs> 10 minutes, um, and then we'll come back. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners.
Hey, in the, we're going to re, restart up our meeting here. Give a moment here. <clears throat> we appreciate everybody being here in the good side conversations, but um, there's a big atrium out there if you're willing to take it out there. Okay, we're moving on to item all the way to item number three already. Okay. <laughs> Donald, you're taking over for Luke on this one? Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, Luke Mormon was uh, the case planner, is not, uh, was not able to be with us today, but he's the next two cases, uh, but he put a lot of work into these, so I'd like to recognize Luke's contribution there. The next uh, subdivision here is the Green Acres second edition, a minor subdivision, and this is located here on 13th Avenue South and uh, 23rd Street South, actually, or uh, yeah, yeah, 23rd Street South, this is 25th, 23rd Street South. Um, most recently there was the Come and Go uh, convenience store here which has since uh, left that area and uh, the uh, property here is a little differently shaped than we normally see uh, property looks like this from the street these these yellow lines here are the approximate property lines um, and the tenants we were advised by the applicant today that these tenants are have all vacated this property so there is there is no uh, no uses in this building at this time so this is looking at the corner of 23rd and and 13th Avenue South, and then this is uh, 13th Avenue South here, property, subject property over here on the right, just what that looks like. Current zoning is LC, limited commercial, no zone change is proposed, there is no conditional overlay. And the subject, uh, or the, the uh, subject property is actually composed of a few, a few lots that are hooked together. When this property was platted as Green Acres, first edition in 1975, it looked much different, and uh, as you can see on the, the the properties have you know different configurations other than perfectly rectangular. They've all been uh, sort of cut and pasted together over the years, and the uh, applicant intends to take some of these uh, deed joined properties and just plat them into one single uh, lot and block description here for his future development. Um, the uh, this but is pretty straightforward a minor plat as you can get. Uh, the applicant's representative Andrew Thill of Lowry Engineering is. Uh, here this afternoon with us and uh, staff's recommendation for approval is stated in the staff report and shown on the screen. Thank you commissioners that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you Donald. Any questions for Donald? Seeing none is the applicant here wish to add anything? Uh, Andrew Phil with Lowry Engineering. I can answer any questions if there are any. Any questions for the applicant? Go ahead, Don. What are the plans? Um, they are putting up or proposing to put up a uh, laundromat. Um, so it's a uh, kind of the, the business idea. It's more of a new technology laundromat uh, business. Um, so I think it's going to be a nice, uh, nice addition to that area and kind of get some of the old blighted buildings out and put something new up. So that's going to take up the entire space? Yes, yep, it'll all turn into one site, one development. I see. So at least it's not another car wash. <laughs> <laughs> no. There is Something's one right... still getting washed, though. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah. that's true, but there is another car wash right behind yeah. it, right? It is, this one is not a car wash. I'm well, sure there will be more, but this, this one here. is not. You yeah, can, okay. You're going to walk through this one. And just to clarify, <laughs> It was like a self-serve laundromat. It's not like a laundry, like a big cleaning facility. Or no, no, like self-serve laundromat. Yep. Any other questions for the applicant? And no dry cleaning, right? Uh, not, not that I know of. Oh, okay, because that makes a difference in terms of environmental impact. No, no, uh, not uh, self-serve. Yep. It, any other comments or questions? Nope. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, what are your wishes? I move to approve with the motion in the staff report. I second. I've got a motion in three seconds. That's good. <laughs> um, any other discussion? Otherwise, we'll take the roll. Morgan? Aye. Guckelman? Aye. Stoffer? Aye. Rosenberg? Aye. Holtz? Aye. Shuey? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Donald. Moving on to item number four. 
Good afternoon, good evening. Commission members, um, item 4A, B and C are applications for um, Southwest Fargo Mission Second Edition. The application is for a minor subdivision, which is replatting lots, lots one and two of block one, Southwest Fargo Mission Edition, a zoning change on just the proposed lot one um, from PI to PI Public and Institutional and GC General Commercial with the CO conditional overlay, mm -hmm. as well as a conditional use permit to allow residential use on um, the proposed lot one on the west side of the property. On your map here, you can see the location. Um, we're talking here just north of 40th Avenue and just east of 45th Street. You'll see drain 27 just to the north here. Images are, if you were to position yourself uh, at the intersection of 40th and 45th, the top, whoops, Top image is looking north, um, so you can see the bike trail or shared use path on the west side, um, east side of 45th, west side of the picture, or west part, uh, left part of the picture, um, the overhead power lines, and then below you can see looking east on 40th Avenue. And this is another image just near drain uh, 27 looking towards the church here. Um, zoning, you can see these uh, lot one and lot two here. Um, it is PI, public and institutional. The plat would replat these um, two legal lots into two new lots with different configuration to allow for a mixed use building on the proposed lot one. Um, that's intended to have some underground parking, um, first floor of commercial, and three stories of residential above that. This is just a preliminary site plan kind of superimposed over the aerial image to see um, how that would lay out. It's not 100% accurate, and this is just a preliminary site plan for your review. Um, the church would stay. Um, there's no proposals um, that we're aware of at this time for the church. And there is a conditional overlay. Um, this is a pretty consistent, consistent with conditional overlays along um, other arterials in the south area of the city, which includes um, prohibited uses, um, restrictions or requirements to building materials, facade variation and color <laughs> scheme, screening of rooftop units, loading facilities and dumpsters, pedestrian circulation, and the requirement to have green space and internal internal parking lot landscaping. Um, one quick note here on the north you'll see, or uh, as well uh, here on the north side of the plat, um, with this application there's a subdivision water course set setback waiver. Um, and what this does, or what the land development code um, requires is that a 175 foot dedication from the center, center line of the drain um, occur in coordination with our engineering department and with the Southeast Cass Water Resources District. Um, it was determined that a, an easement would be sufficient in this location as opposed to a separate lot, as you might have seen on um, uh, item prior here, but would be an easement and which is, will be created to um, dedicate that area and then there would also be the allowance of um, paving in that area, so certain conditions would have to go along with that. So this is considered part of the plat, not a separate um, entitlement. We did receive two calls on this uh, application with no noted concern. And in your packet is the full conditional overlay. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but this concludes staff's presentation. Um, um, I apologize, let me take a step back. There is the condition with the um, conditional use permit for the residential here. Um, there is the condition that there's a maximum density. Um, so that would be uh, accommodating about 57 units on the site, which is what they anticipate. So with that, that's staff's presentation. Be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Megan. I, I have one question for you. Um, this seems like a good use of a lot of excess land that's been there for a while. Um, I just have a question on the parking in the parking lot. I know what we've seen a lot of applications kind of share parking with church facilities just because of the timing. It, and the way it looks, it looks on your graphic here, is it taking over sort of part of the church's parking lot with the redevelopment? Because that the parking lot for the church extends kind of all the way to the west right now, right? That is correct. It does extend further, I'm sorry, uh, here we go. Um, so you can see down here, it does extend further east. Um, and so um, Chris Mack with Christensen Companies is here, and I know there's been some discussions of maybe how parking would work or uh, we have taken a preliminary look at how parking, uh, how much parking the church needs per the land development code and, and what options there might be. So um, that may be something that gets further discussed or will get further discussed as how the parking, <clears throat> parking works. Okay, I appreciate but, that just because, you know, we've obviously done a lot of um, reduction, parking reductions on these type of projects. And so I just want to make sure we're not overbuilding our parking lots if it's not needed. That is something that, yep, staff has um, spoken with the applicant about of what the parking needs are, and so it 
maybe you see a reduction. Um, we're not entirely sure yet, but. Okay. Any other questions for Megan? Seeing none, does the applicant wish to add anything? Um, yeah, uh, good evening. Um, I'm Chris Mack with uh, Christian, Christensen Companies. Um, yes, to address the parking, um, we will be removing that area of parking on the southwest corner of uh, the current church lot. Um, and we, we have been working with the church uh, quite a bit with this as well. The seating that they have in the church currently um, is requiring around 96 spaces. And once we remove that area um, from, their, um, from their site, um, they will still have around um, 120, 28, 29. Um, I had it on other um, documents. It just didn't get uh, in, in the meeting today. But um, now with what we're proposing, um, we're looking at doing a restaurant and some other retail. We don't know, we don't have users at the time, but we just kind of guess when we have uh, fit up spaces. And we know we, we do plan on doing uh, 50, six uh, units, um, apartment units. So that puts us at uh, 253 um, and that's what we would fit on our site. And then we may come back with a shared parking agreement too, just so we know that there might be parking on the church and then there might be people parking on our lot too from the church, so. Thanks, thanks for the consideration of that. Any other questions for that? Okay. Uh, just one question. The property immediately <coughs> north behind the church isn't at this point we're still going to have that corner of that lot that would be like if i'd call it the northeast corner of that lot that would not be part of this at this time so um the area east and north of the church well this most or of this sits on the west side of the church yep right? but now you get then you still have the the northeast corner of that whole lot and at this time that would be the church property and okay. if they decide to do an addition or whatever that would be up to them i guess at that point any other questions go ahead don um <clears throat> i have a question uh it just i i'm kind of mystified um so what is the financial arrangement with the church? I mean, why is the church involved with this? Um, the church currently owns the entire property. And they are, they're just selling the property? They're selling to the property developer? to us, and then we are um, being the rep, I'm the representative for the church right now. We're in oh. the process of, of buying the property. I see, but then there won't be any um, uh, connections between the two? Um, they'll like I said, we'll be, there won't be any financial connections between the two. There'll be a shared, shared parking more than likely, but, um, but it would be the church would just sell the property to, to our group. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering because of the um, name of the title of the development, but thank you it very was, much. Yeah. It was just a, that was their, their previous plat that they did. And we just did the second edition. So, okay. Yep. Any other questions for the applicant? Seeing, is there any, thank you for being here. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to say anything for or against? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, what are your wishes? I move to approve. Second. Motion and second, any discussion? Please take the roll. Gunkelman? Aye. Stoffern? Aye. Holtz? Aye. Rosenberg? Aye. Morgan? Aye. Shuey? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you again for being here. Moving on to other items, a growth plan update with Kim. I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'll just wait till you're ready. Go ahead. All right. Well, good night. Um, Kim Sotrowski. I was going to just give you uh, an informal update on the growth plan. If you have questions, please feel free to interrupt. This is just a kind of a status update of where we're at in the process and, and, and the future things. So 
this is kind of what I was going to give, just a little bit of a history, where we're at, and where we're going. So as you know, especially after your meeting today, that Fargo is growing. Uh, we are growing outward in the new development areas, as well as we're seeing redevelopment of, of places within the city, like downtown. Our growth is also impacted by the FM diversion, so flood protections um, impact development now, and as the diversion completes, it'll also continue to, to impact um, what growth looks like for our city. And so where you fit, uh, that the Century Code enables planning commissions and cities to establish master plans that help guide our community, kind of visioning our documents. And the Land Development Code outlines a process in which the planning commission um, turns into kind of the champion and ambassador. So you review each of the plans and then make that formal recommendation to the city commission for their adoption. So as we go through this process, you are kind of the, the step right before it gets to that final adoption. So we hope to bring you plenty of updates as this process goes through to make sure you are informed of the process and the opportunities for community engagement um, as we work on the plan. So as we know, there are a catalog of plans that we reference when we have a development opportunity and as we make other um, recommendations. So you can see back in you know, 2000, 1999, was the Land Development Code and a comprehensive plan preceded that document. Shortly after that, a growth plan for uh, the growth in the fringe areas was adopted. And then because of all the growth that happened in between there, an update to the growth plan was um, continued in 2007. In 2012, we did the comprehensive plan. And oftentimes, comprehensive plans include an update to that future land use. But since the time frame between those two, there wasn't a component to update a future land use map part of that comprehensive plan. So now we get to where we're at right now. And as we look, oftentimes um, our, our growth plan is outdated now. And that comprehensive plan doesn't have a land use component. And, and it's been 10 years now. So is the vision that the comprehensive plan established still relevant? Um, and then all of those questions as we go into our growth plan will lead us into a land development code update. These are all things I think you're probably aware of and, and look at and understand each time you look at one of your applications for an entitlement. Um, and so we want to make sure as we move forward that we all are on the same page and understanding. So right now, this future growth plan will review all of our existing plans and documents and really try to understand what those values and principles and vision are for growth in our community. And then we're going to have a check, you know, like, this is what those documents said. Is this still relevant now? And then as we move forward in establishing the growth plan, we want to make sure that it has all of the information you need. So when you have one of these um, plans, that you, it supports whatever the application is, or we have a way to get through it to help make our decisions easier. And then, again, it'll lead us into that land development code and outlining actions to, to implement that vision and plan. So the, the, the future land use map and this growth plan will establish the, the picture, and then the, the LDC update will actually get to the, the details that you saw today where, you know, like what is the setback, what is the use in each of those things. So we'll also, um, kind of discuss, you know, where, how much growth do we want? How much should we anticipate? Where will that go? Will it be more dense buildings in the core or on a corridor? Or will it just continue along the edges? And then as we move towards that LDC update, what would that look like? So uh, within our process, there's three phases. Right now, we're still in phase one, where we are looking at what development looks like right now. What are our policies? What are our master plans regarding engineering, public works, water, wastewater, all of the systems that go towards these developments. Once somebody is in our city, we are obligated to 
provide services. And so all of these pieces come together. Um, so phase one, we're gonna understand how our development has been going. And then phase two, we'll kind of check that, does our current history represent our vision for going forward? And so we're gonna figure out where we wanna go. And then phase two, we'll kind of figure out, okay, maybe there's some scenarios in place and we're gonna study a few different things. Um, and then into phase three, where we're you know, developing the actual plan. So again, phase one is where we're at right now. What path are we on? Where will it take us if we stick with the same development patterns that you've seen? Or even how they've evolved over time uh, to modify, or if we should discard certain things. And then phase two, we will kind of look at what that current path and what that future might look like, and if there should be any changes, and we'll test some different scenarios. And then phase three, we'll start working towards that LDC update. So again, we're right in the middle of phase one. Um, and so the consultant team is still reviewing all of our plans. We've provided probably more than they would ever uh, think of with all of the different departments and planning documents to really understand the inner workings of our city. Uh, we had the visit a couple months ago now um, as a meet and greet with that consultant team. And we have future meetings with their subconsultants uh, who will be looking at some of the economic impacts or the engineering impacts. And so I don't know how much time we have to talk, but just to kind of pick your brain, are there things that that do work well in the way we grow now? Open up the... Kim, I, I appreciate this update. I think everyone's pretty interested in this. I know when we had our brown bag six weeks ago, there was a lot of feedback after that about what our role is as planning commissioners. And one of the conversations with Nicole and our liaison commissioner was, you know, we should have some planning commission appointments to the advisory committee so we could be as be liaisons in addition to these sort of quarterly updates or whatever is at, as needed with the group. And so I guess as, as chair, I, I put together my one person nominating committee, I guess, but I worked with Miranda and we'd like to nominate three people for appointment to the advisory committee. And it would be the chair and vice chair, so Miranda, myself, and then Commissioner Holtz as well as a third member, if she's willing, just to kind of be our liaison and eyes and ears on the, on the process, listening to the public that provides input and providing our, our point of view as well. That doesn't stop the plan from coming back here or, or these types of presentations. It's just to kind of build that cohesiveness so that there's a, a better cohesiveness, I guess. Do you need me to verbalize agreement? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'd, I'd ask for a motion to appoint the three of us, but I'd, happy to hear discussions too. I mean, this is, if there's a different feelings out there, please. It seems a good approach to keep uh, um, information flowing between the commission and the, and the plan. I'll move to, uh, for the three commissioners. Second. Thanks, we have a motion and a second. Other discussions on what else you'd like to see as far as feedback? I know we should take some time to answer. I think she has two questions, just to get a little more feedback opportunity while we're here, but it's getting late now too. So. Well, let's vote on this. Okay. Then we can we just need a voice vote. Sure, any other discussion on this? Um, we'll take a roll, an easy way to do it. Shuey? Aye. Morgan? Aye. Gunkelman? Aye. Holtz? Aye. Stoffern? Aye. Rosenberg? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Motion passes. I, I, I think we've got to have a brown bag and explain to, we've got most of the commissioners right now are have been on here. Let, Rocky and I are the only two older commissioners on here. Or older, I'm the older. <laughs> as far as terms on here, I think we've got to have a brown bag where we explain how the comp plan, the growth plan, and the LDC, how they work together. Because we're just taking, you know, we, we we all of a sudden jump back from the LDC to the growth plan, which makes a lot of sense. But I think we need to have a brown bag where we sit down with us commissioners and just have basic 101 on how these three things fit together. 
because I'm even confused at times how how the um, comp plan fits in with the growth plan, and you know why do you have the why do you have the two different ones? Um, we, we've got to have a brown bag. I mean, you you need to spend some time educating us on how they all work um, together. And the other thing that would be very helpful is years ago. I asked for a city map, and I'm talking about one that's probably two feet wide and three feet tall because Fargo's spread out, where you could actually now show the diversion, show just what we were doing today up in north uh, by Riley's Acres, and show where Fargo actually can go and how we're going to interact with Horace because right now we're 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 kind of blind about that. So. That would be very helpful to have. Um, I had mine in my bulletin board in the in in my uh, old office before our fire, and it was kind of interesting to see where you could you could really visualize better about when we get our packets, even you know our, our little map, but essentially a bigger map. Um, maybe not a whole lot of stuff on it, other than I mean, maybe an aerial, but. It would be very beneficial as we talk about extending our ET in the future, which is going to be part of this growth plan. Do we extend it down to the diversion? And um, but I think we need to spend some time with all of us. And I, I feel kind of bad sometimes that I don't always understand how these all fit together. Um, I mean, because you're asking us questions about stuff that. I think everybody could use a little bit of a, a, a primer course on <laughs> how do they work together. I mean, how do they all fit? How all these pieces fit together? So, I think that is one thing that consistently comes up in our conversations. I would say um, to both uh, to both your points that what what seems to be working well is the balance of dialogue, um, the exchange of ideas, and feedback. And um, I appreciate the, the um, thought put into nominating a committee um, to be a little more involved in this. I, uh, I would certainly appreciate a little more discussion or information around um, in this, it, in looking to the future, you know, the the plan we had in place in 2007 was looking 20, 30 years into the future, 10, 20 years, yeah. Um, is that reasonable? Are we growing at a pace or are things changing at a pace where maybe we need to shorten the window of future growth planning or maybe we need to be exploring um, you know, uh, some more um, extreme values. You know, we heard today a lot of ideas around, do we value industry over, um, I guess, uh, con quiet contentment, peaceful living? Do we value um, economic development over environmental sustainability. So I would really like a little more information about how these different departments and agencies work together and collaborate with our neighbors um, so that we can be good neighbors and that so when we develop this growth plan, we are we're not establishing um, a precedent for ignoring or dismissing the needs of our neighbors. Thanks, and I'll just say, I know, I think the best thing that's working is, you know, you look at our growth plan being 16 years old, so many areas of our LDC are sort of out of date that we keep coming up with these, you know, interim changes. Um, but when you look at the our staff packets and the votes from the commission, staff does an excellent job getting the applicants to where they need to be, where we don't, you know, we do sometimes, but for the most part, we agree and we're the unanimous consensus to the city commission. I think that says a lot, given the fact that all of these are way out of date. And I think if we didn't have the staff we did, we'd notice the problems with this a lot sooner. So it's almost, we're 
product of our own success, I guess, at the city. So that's good work to all of you. But also, it should be a lot easier on all of you if you had updated plans where you could show, you know, an applicant, no, this is the policy. It's, and even for us, when you show, try to make a decision on a growth plan that's that old and this public is right, and they say, that's not what you told us with the growth plan. And we're sitting here going, well, the growth plan's way out of date. You know, and it just makes, makes it really awkward decisions. And so those are tough when you get into a public realm like this. So. Any other comments? I believe your other question was basically just what's not working, right? It's, right. <laughs> so if there's any yet, time for feedback. The only thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see the LDC get going here. I'd like to see the bidding moving that along. Because, I mean, it takes whatever, six months to hire somebody and go through all this process. And I think if we keep kicking this can and wait until the growth plan's done, that we're never going to get, we're going to be a year and a half away from the LDC after the growth plan's done. I'd like to see us at least, par we can parallel some of this and at least get started faster because uh, it, it's going to be terrible to have a growth plan with this old LDC and, and dealing with that for two years especially when you look at South Fargo and the major growth that's going to happen down there over the next five years. I mean, we're going to have a lot of issues coming up with that lake and that whole development down there is going to be uh, moving, I think, moving pretty fast. And if we're not ready, we're just going to be making change, you know, variances for everything because it's just been thrown together. And so I know as part of CZB's work, they have some other team members there is an LDC component that they're sort of starting on. What What is that versus what we would send out for another rewrite RFP is, Art? Do you know, Mark? Um, yeah, all of that is is uh, quite complicated. And, um, you know, ironically, the 2007 growth plan has been fairly robust, as, as old as it is. The so right now we're we're kind of collecting all the information, all the data, and they're analyzing it. Um, we we haven't even seen any of their initial findings as far as the consumption, the development, the permits, the density, the square footage, um, and and there's going to be a few components as far as that are, are, are going to be paralleling in that research uh, that also is 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 bringing all the other plans within the city, within the, all the utilities, the engineering, you know, to, to kind of comprehensively put it into one document. And one way I kind of explain this is, you know, the 2007 growth plan was sort of a colorful map that planning kept on fighting for. This growth plan is going to have all the city's plans, so it's all the departments that are going to want to see what direction this goes. Um, hopefully somewhere around the end of that phase two, we're gonna have some ideas of where we probably are gonna go through the community input and, and the work on this existing growth plan that's gonna help us uh, formulate the language to be able to put together the RFP to start figuring out how exactly we want that um, LDC rewrite to go. You know, Obviously we did the LDC diagnostic. It determined that ours was pretty insufficient, need to be redone, you know, both core neighborhood plan and the LDC diagnostic identified the fact that based on the development you guys have been doing for the last 10 years, you need a new growth plan, which was very correct. Um, and then, then it's going to be jumping in that, that LDC or LDC rewrite. Chronologically, this growth plan is, is once we get into the middle of that phase two, into phase two, it's going to go pretty fast. This is, this is scheduled to be a 14 month period process. I, I anticipate it's probably going to be a couple more months longer than that, just so everyone is part of this process. Um, and then I'm hoping, you know, towards maybe the end of this year, we're, we have a pretty good idea of what that RFP for the LDC rewrite is going to look like. And then we'll be getting someone, you know, probably started by maybe this time next year as far as, as analyzing that information. The other challenging thing is to be able to uh, work with our annual budget to be able to make sure that we're not overspending and can afford that LDC rewrite too. So that that's why we're we're kind of in that time frame roughly, but that's the plan. 
Anybody else have comments they'd like to share at this time? Is there, are you all interested in getting sort of updates from Kim on the process as it goes along? Or not? Quite definitely. Yeah, yeah this definitely. Is fantastic fantastic process. process. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, Kim, appreciate you taking the time. I know our meeting got late tonight, but appreciate you being here. And um, so again, just the next steps, the consultant team is still working on understanding all of our different plans and where we're going. Uh, they plan to kind of have a little bit of a mid summary of some of that stuff, hopefully mid May for that advisory committee, which is a, a broad spectrum of stakeholders to kind of look at that. And then the kind of kickoff growth plan uh, will happen sometime mid June. So we'll keep you posted as, as we know more. You know, for, for next steps there, and. Mark, you mentioned getting sort of, you know, you haven't gotten feedback from the consultants yet. And, you know, that's obviously the information you're, you're waiting on. Um, I know our meetings are public, and so some of that doesn't need to come out right now, but it'd be interesting if you get feedback that you think would be a good brown bag. I know our commission would be interested in that. And so if there's a portion of that that you feel like, oh, this is cool, cool work they did, um, we don't want to, you know, prejudge anything, but I think that would be an interesting to hear from them about what they're collecting yeah and I think I think that will I think we'll be able to do that along the way as far as what the findings are as, as we turn them public and, and I do agree it, it would be nice to have a brown bag to kind of go through the one-on-one of all the plans that we have and how they actually interact with each other and what the goal is with them in the future because really the planning department's been working really hard at setting all these different plans up to be renewed every five years um, if, if we would have updated the 2007 growth plan in five years, it would have been a fourth of the work that it's taking to update the growth plan today. So as we get that routine going, it, it's it, it's going to create a situation where the planning commission is more involved, more uh, educated on the topic. And and um, I, I, I have to say that, you know, we, we had problems with attendance prior to COVID. COVID kind of shut everything down. So I, I think it would not be a bad idea to, to do that again. I know even when, when John was talking about how the plans all work, I'm like, I thought Nicole gave a presentation on that, but I bet if I looked, it was probably four or five years ago. And so we probably do need to do those on a semi-regular basis. Well, Mark and Kim, you bring up an interesting point. With the LVC coming after or starting soon, um, where does the comprehensive plan then does it does the comprehensive plan probably need to um, be looked at fairly soon too? I mean, now that those two get changed, in how does that then relate to the comprehensive plan? I would maybe say, you know, when we could this could be a two-hour brown bag, but but really when you look at the goal twenty thirty plan. Yeah, those are the high level ten goals the city wants to achieve. And you're well, looking at that that as the comprehensive plan. Yeah, and the okay. Go 2030 plan is the comprehensive yes. plan. You know, the growth plan is is kind of a subsection of that that you know generally identifies how to achieve those ten major goals identified in the Go 2030 plan. And then the LDC then is the on the boots you know, detailed plan yep. that accommodates what the growth plan is kind of saying based on how it reflects to the comprehensive plan. And, you know, so obviously we're going to be looking at the Go 2030 plan in quite a lot of detail, and we're probably going to learn a lot more out of what the community wants today versus what yeah. what they wanted back when the, the Go 2030 plan was created in 2012. So that's a 30-second sort of explanation. That's kind of how that do you make together. amendments to the comprehensive plan? I think I think in time we'll we'll need to update that. And okay. what that what that plan is gonna do is reflect all the work we've done on all the other plans right. and make sure that everything's still consistent in the and and what the goal is still identified what the community wants. Mark, I know you were joking that it's probably a two hour conversation, but I guess my question for the commissioners, do you wanna do a brown bag on that third week in May? Why can't we have a two-hour conversation on it if that's the questions of the commission? People know far enough in advance. But as Mark mentioned too, before COVID, we did get pretty 
poor attendance at these. They went downhill for a while. And so I, we don't want to hold them if, if people aren't going to attend either. So just not shaming anybody, but just throwing that out there on the front end because if we start having these and people don't show up, it's a lot of work and effort too. So. Well, we look at the criticality of this topic though and the longevity of it. It's worthy of a significant investment. I agree. Well, I guess we can follow up, but I guess you know we used to have that meeting on it was a third week Wednesday type thing, but if, if, if you could look at a date that would make sense for staff and let us know, that would be great. And again, I don't, I, I wasn't trying to get you into a position. I don't mean that you, you know, I think, I think Nicole would always indicate that they take a lot of work, but I think basically this is just what you as planners know that we don't know. I mean, and how these three pieces of the puzzle, you know, do they all three intersect in the middle? I, I think that's basically what I, th I think the commissioners would gain a lot of knowledge from. Yeah, because we probably don't, we don't know the questions we should be asking sometimes. And so the more we know, the more better questions we can ask. Yeah, and the wider the scope of our view. I mean, that would be kind of a well, much bigger point of view and uh, would be of great benefit to all of us. They like it better, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything else? Thank you, everybody. Good work tonight. And we'll adjourn. Thanks, Kim. Sorry.